Salutations, Chads and Chadettes. Welcome to Darktide, a game that has single-handedly turned my kitchen sink into a champion of Nurgle, while I avoided my responsibilities in favor of reviewing this game. I've been avoiding this ungodly beast for a few weeks now, and I think it's high time I confronted the kitchen filth. So today, I'm uploading this review. Darktide is a game developed by Swedish game developer Fatshark, located in Stockholm. This game has had a troubled life cycle, just like the mutated and bug-infested followers of Nurgle. Because at release, it ran poorly, was infested with bugs, and wasn't all that fun. Now, after a few patches, I'm actually enjoying it. But maybe that could have to do with the devs including a bit of Stockholm's culture by giving us all the Stockholm Syndrome. Just like its big brother Vermintide, Darktide is a 4-player co-op horde shooter inspired by Left 4 Dead. But this time around, we don't have French people anymore. The dwarf is noticeably bigger. The elf has run off even further ahead to avoid being in this game. The playable characters aren't nearly as memorable and aggressively yeah, British. <laughs> yeah. And the gameplay focuses more on ranged combat this time around. Dark Tide's story. If you don't know anything about Warhammer's grim derp lore, then fear not, for I will use my questionable knowledge as a crackhead lore master. Be warned, a creature tainted by chaos such as myself may spout information widely regarded as heresy. Chapter 1. The God Vegetable of Mankind In the faraway grimder future of the 41st millennium, mankind has expanded beyond the stars and turned into super xenophobic racists. With the firmly enforced belief that their once healthy but now vegetative god emperor stuck on life support protects all of mankind. Mankind has formed a religion about him and humanity now lives under tight law enforcement which has driven everyone to live their life in service of the emperor. The sacrilegious people who instead dare to live their life the way they desire freely from the system are shunned by society, deemed to be heretics, jailed, given horrendous jobs that would make anyone wish they lived in a Siberian gulag, or, if they are lucky, purged on sight. In Darktide, you are one of these people, huh? a prisoner being transported on board a spaceship headed towards Atoma Prime to be put to work for the rest of his life or killed. But unfortunately for you, there's a problem. Chapter 2. The God of the Porcelain Throne Now here comes the dirty part. Nurgle, the chaos god of decay, filth, and disease, is essentially bacteria satan in this universe. And the Imperium doesn't like when people begin to worship the excretion demon instead of the almighty vegetable Jesus. Depending on a few things, Nurgle may grotesquely deform and mutate you if he deems you a worthy cultist or even a champion. Lick the floor all day, become sick, and you might be granted one of Nurgle's blessings and turned into one of his plague bearers. Feast from the toilet seats and spread the T-virus to your colleagues in your work environment. And we are looking at a real champion right there. Now, understandably, the Imperium of Man doesn't really like when Nurgle blesses their friends and turns them into mutated humanoids, or living bacteria hentai monsters about to vore them. So, the xenophobic humans might, understandably, respond violently against such bacterial horrors and use more than Mr. Clean all-purpose cleaner to dispose of them. Now, if you want to redeem yourself, you're going to show your faith in the Emperor by grabbing a latrine shovel and cleaning up Nurgle's eagle house. Because the ship you're being carried on just got boarded by a Nurgle Chaos Cult. The planet you were headed towards has been seized by Nurgle's cultists and is now a doomed planet. And your prison cell just got blown wide open. No one in charge trusts a prisoner like you around here, but there's also no one else that can help with cleaning the mess going on. So, you're simultaneously the best available and expendable. Your friendly local inquisitor and the hot local MILF in your area, Captain Granny Smith, both decided you're going to fight violently to unclog the pipes of Atoma Prime from Nurgle's filth, or until you drop dead. You have no choice in this. Welcome to Darktide. Now, before we escaped the prison ship, we had to do something very important. Create our character. Fortunately, 
we have a bunch of depressing options we can select to give our character a backstory in this game, none of which will matter later, other than what class we pick, what voice we chose, and how beautiful we make our character, nothing really matters and won't be acknowledged. It doesn't matter what your name is! <laughs> Unless you picked Kadio as your planet because that defiled crater has a few unique voice lines in the game and allows you to change your eye color for some reason. Understandably, the most important option is what crackhead class we decide to play. We have the Veteran, your standard Call of Duty man number 69 million that forgot his killstreaks at home, the Zealot, who is a massive simp for the Emperor, the Zealot on higher levels uses his faith in the Emperor to make every enemy in the immediate vicinity cringe into a stunlock and leave your team alone. Psychers, which are essentially mutant humans with big brain superpowers, rendered insane by the whispers in the warp. The Psyker essentially allows you to roleplay as Dr. Emperor Palpatine, allowing you to drop shields to keep everyone alive, while simultaneously turning everyone's frame rate into a PowerPoint. Listen, the enemies already bring enough pain and suffering to everyone. Please leave my machine out of this. Lore-wise, the Imperium doesn't generally like Psychers because they are seen as witches. Often, Psychers are captured and brought to the God Emperor so that they can be fed to him to keep him alive on life support. Here comes the airplane! They say you are what you eat, but I refuse to be eaten by a vegetable. So, this class is off the kitchen table. <laughs> Last but not least, the Ogren. Lore-wise, Ogren are what toddlers would be like if they had the body of a gorilla. The smartest Ogren recorded could write the first letter of his name, Count to Four was considered a genius for remembering his own name, Nork, and could even form sentences without sounding like a complete troglodyte. Even with these, uh, um, qualities, Ogren are our best pick because they can carry weapons meant to be mounted on vehicles, use brute strength to pile drive their enemies, refuse to die, are blissfully ignorant, but most importantly, have the best weapon in the game a literal rock. Listen, you can have all the most advanced futuristic weaponry in the world, but nothing asserts dominance harder than using rocks. Rocks have historically solved everything. Need a solid house? Use rocks. Need to erect sturdy, long-lasting monuments? Use bigger rocks. Need to beat someone stronger than you? Apply rocks to their face. Just like real life, rocks work against everything. Want to send that cowardly sniper across the map to an early grave? Hurl a rock at them. Got a big armor-clad lad rushing you? Don't worry, armor will protect them against overwhelming blunt trauma. Throw a rock. One of Nurgle's monstrosities decided to introduce itself for a surprise boss fight? Stone it to death. Tired of violence and just want to make new friends? That's right! Use a rock. That's cute. Oh, Born that's a good one. Buzzing. I got a or is that you? Truly, it's a miracle they haven't started eating their own bullets after confusing them with their crayons. Ogren are the objectively correct pick. So, after naming our character after a sound he made when he fell out of his own mother, we are ready to experience the fecal festival Nurgle has prepared for us. We are deployed on our first mission, fight our way through hordes of enemies with three other players while supporting each other and completing objectives. We also pick up loot along the way until we eventually complete the mission assignment and extract by air back to the spaceship. Now, just like an elevator, Dark Tide is a game with its ups and downs. So let's just start by diving into the meat and potatoes of this game, which is the gameplay. The gameplay of Dark Tide is hectic. Chaotic, in fact, because you'd expect chaos in your life if you were going up against the unclean champions of Nurgle armed with a shovel to dig your own grave. In Darktide, you assemble a team of four rejects and go from A to Z on linear missions with random enemy spawns and boss encounters spread across the map to mix and spice up every run. The combat is very responsive, satisfying, and the amount of weapons and class variety makes playing with new weapons and character builds something addictive. No two runs of the same map are ever the same. Sometimes, there are even different modifiers on the map to further make your life more unbearable as a reminder that life is unforgiving and to accept Papa Nurgle's love. Sometimes, the maps may have a dense fog that turns everything into the Silent Hill dimension, preventing you from seeing more than two feet in front of you so that you lose sight of your hopes and dreams. 
Or, sometimes Nurgle's followers decide to walk all of their dogs at once, which leads to your whole team getting aggressively cuddled. Sometimes, you even get to roleplay as a librarian and try to find the overdue books that the Chaos Cultists borrowed and never returned to the library by force. However, unlike its big brother Vermintide, the books you find in this game don't influence your rewards nearly as much, and most players don't even bother looking for them. Which makes me question why books were even implemented in this game at all. Dangtide has a few roles you can play depending on how you build your character, such as supports, boss killers, and elite or special killers. But the most important rules in this game are to stay with your team and learn target priority, because the bonobo monkey that decided to run ahead get pinned down by a special mob that won't let him go and is now dying on the floor might be the downfall of your entire run, when the team rushes against the clock to get to his rapidly failing body and gets themselves killed as a result. Some people will tell you that there is no eye in team. Yes, there is. Ironically, the eye is hidden deep in the a-hole, bringing the whole team down and then rage quitting the game. Stop doing that. Weapons. As we make our way through the fecal tainted corridors and breathe in the warm musky air of Papa Nurgle's fat ones, we obtain new weapons every time we complete a mission and come back alive. Most weapons, if not all, have different movesets or serve different purposes for different builds. The Zealot's Thunder Hammer has charged attacks that are good at dealing high single target damage spikes and at killing bosses. But the weapon is entirely feculent at cleaving through hordes of enemies, because it lacks the lethal cleaving force of a zealot's chainsword, and instead knocks the horde down, leaving you flailing around like you're using a wet noodle to hit the same trash mobs over and over. In Stanktide, it is imperative for our success to bring the right tools for the right job. So, once you're level 30, go to the shop. Keep buying the weapon type you want as if you're spending all your money trying to pull for your waifu in a gacha game, obtain a weapon with high base numbers that suits your needs. When you're satisfied with your weapon's base stats, go upgrade it and pray to the god emperor you get good perks. You can change two perks or skills, but no more. You can reroll the two stats you changed so you have a bit of leeway if you get shafted. If you really don't like what you crafted, turn it in to unlock the skills on it. Go through that process again, and congratulations, you've acquired a weapon. Want to upgrade curios? Same exact method, except you can't spam by them, and you need to buy them when they are in shop rotation. My advice, reroll one stat to get 10% max experience on each curio while leveling, and change those stats again once you reach level 30, because an extra 10-30% to bonus XP makes the leveling grind much shorter. The enemies. As previously stated, the real meat and potatoes of Darktide is the gameplay, and the enemy variety makes a good chunk of that. In Darktide, there are four categories of enemies. Horde, Elites, Specials, and Monstrosities. Horde enemies mostly exist to be a nuisance and distraction. You kill hundreds of these every level without taking them too seriously, and they mostly exist to be hit so that you can get your shields back. Elites are tougher enemies that are pre-spawned on the map. These enemies are usually harder to kill and have armored body parts to force you to hit different parts with different weaponry and attacks, and in general are dangerous enough to force you into prioritizing them in a fight while also avoiding their attacks. One of the main features that separates elites from special enemies is the fact that they can't pin you down, so they usually spawn more frequently. Special enemies spawn randomly at any time, at any point in the map, with their own audio cues, like a rattlesnake trying to warn you of their existence. Most special enemies can instantaneously pin you down or incapacitate you for either a few seconds or permanently. Similar to Left 4 Dead, the bacteria pit bulls are like the hunter. They can run around and will pounce on you to pin you down. The Mutie is a fast lumbering brick that will rush you in a straight line to grab and throw you. The Trapper often spawns behind you and quickly fires a net at you before doing a happy dance and running away, leaving you squirming to your death until someone comes along to free you. And the special enemies that can't pin you down each have their own unique fun way of making you regret your life decisions. The Sniper usually hides far back behind enemy lines and can quickly kill you in one shot if you don't listen for its audio cue and dodge on time. I say usually because sometimes these idiots run into you and have the same resilience as a house built out of wet Kleenex. The Poxburster exists to give you a panic attack, distracting you from everything else going on around you with its ticking growing faster the closer he gets. 
forcing you into a dangerous and frantic game of finding Waldo in which you need to find him before he finds you. Find Waldo and dispose of him first and you may live unscathed. Lose the game and Waldo self-detonates into your whole team, bringing you all down with him. And let me tell you, on the last two difficulties, you really don't want Waldo to win this game or you will disappear faster than Epstein's client list. The Toxflamer and Scabflamer are more philosophical in their modus operandi. Give a man fire and he's warm for a day. Set a man on fire and he's warm for the rest of his life. Naturally, these guys have a passionate relationship with flamethrowers and will use their burning love to turn up the heat and cover you in hot, sticky napalm. Finally, we have monstrosities, an enemy category that should just be called bosses. These big beautiful boys can appear randomly during a level and have different ways to deal with you and different ways of being dealt with, such as the Plague Ogren, a big odorous boy that really enjoys to knock you around. Standing in front of a Plague Ogren with a ledge behind your back is not a very OSHA certified idea, unless you want to have one last skydiving session before you die. On the other hand, the Daemon Host is just like the Witch in Left for Dead, an optional boss that spawns randomly in terrible parts of the map and will stay still on the floor because she is too busy rambling, crying, and wondering why her OnlyFans just won't sell. The Daemon Host, in its mad ramblings, won't attack you if you sneak by her and don't aggravate her. But if by mistake you get too close or a stray bullet hits her, then she will instantly recognize you as the guy who didn't pay for her pictures this month and proceed to violently rip you to shreds before escaping back into the internet portal that leads to her page. The Daemon Host usually kills entire runs, so unless you know what you're doing, I recommend you don't look her in the eye while you're passing by and reconsider unsubscribing from OnlyFans. Music. The music in this game is electrifying when it pops in. Unfortunately, as a newborn small baby creator on this platform, I'd like to avoid playing music that could lead me to seeing this funny yellow symbol on this video. Because I find it challenging to feed myself with one dollar and appease my landlord. I've tried doing a collab with Mr. Clean to allow him to showcase his immense cleaning powers against the filthy champions of Nurgle, but he didn't respond to my summons. So I'm eating craft dinner for this month again. This game has some really bad options enabled by default that will turn you into a cultist of Nurgle immediately and have you motion sick vomiting everywhere. When you log into this game, I highly suggest you increase your field of view, disable motion blur, and turn off camera shake. Otherwise, good luck holding your lunch in during extended play. Now, we've talked about the lore before, but let's talk about Dark Tide's actual story. The story is not something I'd write home about, which is a shame considering the man who wrote it wrote some respectable Warhammer books before. Understandably, because the player is a custom-made character, it's not exactly easy to create a well-written character, especially if the character you're contractually obligated to write has the personality and vocabulary of a voracious, muscular refrigerator that failed preschool. Ironically, I'd say the story is quite fitting for the game because it stinks as much as Nurgle does. Now, on this channel, I don't like to spoil a good story. So, it's time to spoil all of Darktide. Darktide story! Me name is Thud, me write like crud, was sent to jail, cause me slow. Mean man went boom, I like a big boom. Thud prison, open bank, the emperor. I help so. Zol! Zella! Prison lady. Prison lady. Don't trust Thud. Boated implant hurt. Right in this. Thud. Maybe too slow. I serve the Emperor. On planet. Get lunchbox that go boom. Make new friends on missions. Thud no see new friends when come back. Thud wonder where new friends. Funny robot lady. Don't like Thud either. Makes Thud sad and hungry. Thud here, there is traitor among us. I hope it's not me. Nice man want Thud in his office. Nice man shot bad man. 
people like Thud now. Thud happy. Wow! Truly a shining example of memorable, compelling storytelling, Darktide's narrative has me strongly convinced that Thud could be fed alphabet soup and release a better one after a good bowel movement. Once you've made it to level 30 and want to truly test how long you can stay clean around Nurgle's uncleanest worshippers before kicking the bucket, you can start playing on Damnation or do the Auric Bullshit game mode. These game modes are the most challenging test of skill, offer higher rewards, but no items with higher rarity as rewards unlike Vermintide 2 because this game desperately wants to be worse than Vermintide 2 for some reason. Now, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite part about live service games, the shop. This game also has an in-game shop. Big surprise, because every game needs to be a live service and have a shop these days. Honestly, Stanktide's shop isn't too bad. Fat Shark could have done much worse from what I've seen, it's only cosmetics, and not many of them are even compelling. Pure dress-up garbage simulator, garbage at its finest, and as long as it doesn't start including pay-to-win things, I can cope with it. My problem with the shop isn't what's being sold, but the pricing and how the developers manage the shop. The currency implemented in the shop is just like every other live service game designed to nickel and dime you. Meaning, it doesn't sell the correct amount of currency you want to buy for the things you want. Which is insane, because Fat Shark had this feature working flawlessly in their previous game, Vermintide 2. When people asked on Discord if we could have normal prices back, Fat Shark responded, saying, They were working on it, but it was immeasurably complex. Liar! Really, Fat Shark, if you're going to lie to our face, could you at least put more effort into it? Well, I guess I should not be surprised seeing how much effort you put into your game at launch. Has basic math become immeasurably complex? The last time I went to McDonald's and placed an order, the most immeasurably complex part was figuring out what I wanted to eat. You mean to tell me, literally every shop on the planet can do basic math, but you can't. Well then! It's not a surprise you haven't added Versus mode to Vermintide 2 after almost 5 years now, isn't it? Truly, that must be immeasurably complex when you have actual real-life Ogrens unable to count harder than 5, working in the office, coding the game. Lunch, lunch. Your customers and community deserve better. Anniversary update. Now, while I was creating this mess of a video, the devs at Fatshark decided to actually be productive and released a trailer for their anniversary update. So thank you, Fat Shark, for extending this game review. If I had a nickel every time I made a game review for a game's anniversary, I would have two nickels. Which isn't much, but it's strange that it happened twice. Now, I went in expecting close to nothing about this update. All I knew was that some lore crackheads like me thought we might be getting Tyranids added to the game because of suggestive audio files and because Vermintide 2's new Necromancer class developed NPC versus NPC combat, which could have been used to have Chaos Cultists fight against the Tyranids in Darktide, but no. What did we get instead? When I logged in, we had a nice cutscene to set things up. The veteran's talent tree was changed, which means all the builds I theory crafted and had saved have been deleted. Thank you, Fat Shark. So, I went in and played the new map, which was enjoyable. The set pieces and scenery are top notch, and this game desperately needed more maps. It's free as well, so that's a good step forward from the part of Fat Shark. What I don't quite understand is why this anniversary update needed to be released in two parts instead and why we only got half of it for now in this update. Now, I wish I had more to talk about, but unfortunately, this update fits on a post-it. In conclusion, I rate Danktide a 3 out of 5. As it stands right now, it rightfully earns its place in mixed reviews. I love this game's combat, but I still can't entirely recommend it right now because of some lack of features rendering it inferior to Vermintide 2. If you want to play a game similar to this that's better and cheaper, Buy and go play Deep Rock Galactic. When Fat Shark eventually fixes Dark Tide's design issues, has more maps, enemies, it could certainly become one of the best Warhammer titles out there. As it is right now, it certainly feels better than it was on release, but I believe we are missing a few things for it to be just right. I recommend you get it if it's on sale, or if you're really into the genre, or into Warhammer. Otherwise, just play DRG or VT2. 
Before I end this video, I'd just like to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for having watched my previous video and having allowed me to get monetized on YouTube. I honestly did not expect my first review to go that hard. I thought for sure it would get at best a thousand views within one week. I was insanely surprised when I found out that it got a hundred thousand views within one week. So thank you all for supporting me and I'm glad to have you here. I'll see you in the comments. This has been the Chad Venture. See you next time.